the AI content creation game has completely changed over the last few weeks with the release of Nano Banana. But the truth is people are using these new tools completely wrong and have no clue what sort of steps they need to take to actually create high quality AI generated marketing material. In this video, we're going to solve that problem as I give you my personal framework for creating high quality AI ads. We're going to go through what tools you need to use, how to create assets from scratch, how to actually use Nano Banana so you get outputs that don't look like bad Photoshop edits, what video platforms are best, when they're the best, because it depends on the nature of the video you're creating. And at the end, we're even going to talk about how automation plays into all this. So if you're someone who wants to learn how to leverage AI in the content space, then this video is for you. So with that, let's jump into it. So for today's case study, we're going to be looking at Chase AI Coffee, the new coffee shop that I've clearly opened because we no longer do AI education. And there's me right there. I'm going to show you how we created these models, how we put our branding, everything. So you can do this yourself, even if you have no assets of your own. We'll also be talking a lot about character consistency today, which is one of the biggest things that Nano Banana has brought us. But the most important thing we're going to go over is this AI marketing content workflow. And why is this so important? Well, this video does you no good if I just tell you tips, tricks, and gimmicks of how to get Nano Banana to work, right? Because these tools are only going to get better and better. And as they get better, we need frameworks to utilize them in, right? The tools will come and go, the frameworks are eternal, and that's what we need to focus on so that as these tools get better, so does our work. And the workflow is pretty simple when it comes to this AI-generated advertising. The first step is a foundational image, and that's something we're gonna create with either Midjourney, Nano Banana, Seed Dance, or ChatGPT. Once we have a base image, then we can go into editing that image to whatever we want. And for that, we're gonna use Nano Banana or the recently released Seed Dance 4.0. Lastly is the video piece, and we can use things like VO3, Midjourney, or Hiluo for that. And which one we choose depends on the nature of the video. Is it gonna require a lot of motion, like we saw where we went from the cityscape down to the shop itself, or is it more low motion, like when the woman was just showing us the coffee cup? Those things matter, and we're going to dive into all of them individually. So step number one, foundational images. We need these like base assets that we can use in our final ads down the road. Now, this is going to change depending on what your particular advertisements or products are about. For us, remember, we're creating a coffee shop. So what are we going to need? Well, we need some sort of branding, right? Chase AI Coffee. We need a storefront, right? What is this coffee shop going to look like? We're going to need some sort of model, either myself, like you saw in the video, or the woman we use, right? And we would like to use character consistent models, ideally, especially if you're using yourself, right? You don't want to look like some weird deformed person every single time. And then fourth, we need our product, which for us is simply going to be the coffee. Now, once we've identified what our foundational images are going to be, how do we actually create them? Well, it's a multi-step process. And the first thing you need to ask yourself, are there real world reference images that I would like to use? In our case, let's talk about the coffee shop storefront. There are obviously reference images I'd like to use, and that's what you see right here. So just go onto Google and search to see if there's reference images whose style you like and would like to emulate. The next step is to take that reference image, drop it into your large language model of choice, and just give it a prompt that's saying, hey, give me a mid-journey prompt for this image, be detailed, and tell it to ignore any text from the original image. Essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a prompt for mid-journey, or whichever one you end up using, to recreate this reference image so that we can have sort of like a spiritual successor to whatever we found and like, but it's still wholly original for us. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this prompt and we're going to head over to Midjourney. So if you've never used Midjourney before, it's just an image model website. They put out awesome content. It's 10 bucks a month and it's my favorite app for creating that foundational image. But if you must, you can also use things like Nano Banana or ChatGPT. So I'm just going to go to create and I'm going to drop my prompt in up here. Now this all came from ChatGPT, so I wanna read it at least once and make sure it's what I want. Looks good to me, so we're gonna have it create it. As this is working, let's actually take a look at what the other models made with a similar prompt. So here's our four images with basically the same prompt. Up here on the top left is ChatGPT. Notice it's really dark, I don't love the aspect ratio, and it's kinda of got a strange filter on it. Top right up here is Midjourney. Like I said, I really love the aesthetic they're able to use. And the bottom two are Nano Banana. Now there's two of these because the first one came in at its one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And the second one, I had to do a little gimmick to get it to do 16 by nine. Now I'll show you how to do that because if you've played around with Nano Banana at all, you've probably noticed this aspect ratio issue. 
We'll save that for later in the video, but this gives you kind of a comparison in the quality between these three image models. Now, here's a look what it created. Now, all of these honestly look pretty cool. And like I said, Midjourney does have its own kind of unique aesthetic that I love. And so ultimately up to you at this point, you would just pick the one you like. And for the rest of the video, we'll be using this one for Midjourney as our base image. Now let's talk a little bit about branding because you can see it here on this one, right? We have the Chase AI coffee subtly in the windows. We have it on her apron and you've seen it over on the coffee cups earlier in the video. Now, how did we create that? Well, honestly, this was really basic. All I did was go into Canva, went to design here on the left and just looked for something I like and came up with this in like two minutes. Chances are, if you're doing this for real, you already have your own brand assets, which is perfect because just have them ready to go because that's what we're gonna feed Nano Banana to actually create your brand images. But in a nutshell, that's how I did this. This took 90 seconds. So we're starting to build out some of these foundational images, right? We have our coffee shop, we have our logo. Now, how about some sort of model that we're able to use? How did we make this girl up here? And also what can we do if we wanna put ourselves into the images? Now, the model that you see here was created in Midjourney and I didn't even use any real world references for this. All I did is I put in a Midjourney prompt that basically says, hey, full body portrait, beautiful young woman barista, and then just had it talk about, put it on like a plain background, make it look photorealistic. And as for the prompt itself, I just went to Gemini and I create the prompt for me. Creating a model out of thin air is actually super easy because they've gotten really, really good at creating photorealistic human beings. And to kind of give me a leg up when it came to doing like videos and more ads, I had her just hold a coffee cup, right? But what if you wanted to put yourself in there? What if you wanted a real world reference? Well, you're just gonna do the same thing that we did with the previous image, right? You're gonna take that reference image, you're gonna go to ChatGPT, you're gonna upload the reference image, and you're gonna have it describe you. That's what I did with me. So you see the workflow occurring here inside of Midjourney. You can see all these different variations that it created of me. Some of these actually, it's pretty close, right? And so what did I do? Well, I put the reference image inside of ChatGPT, had it create a prompt about me, threw it into Midjourney, but with one difference than when, when we created the storefront. The difference is I added an image and that's what you see. I just went up here top on the top left. I dropped in an image of me for Omni reference. And then you can just adjust the Omni strength right here. Anything between 150, 125, 100 will get you something close. So it's taking an actual reference image of you, combining it with the prompt you got from the LLM to create something like this. And this is something you can use also as your model for your ads. So the only thing left when it comes to a foundational image for us is coffee, but because that's so easy to create an ad in places, we don't have to go through a full workflow for that. But what do we have now? Well, we have the storefront, which is going to be the setting for all of the ads. We have a model so we can have character consistency throughout, and we have our branding. So we've completed step one, which means we can now move off of Midjourney and go into Nano Banana and start actually doing some cool editing, combining all these things together so we can get coherent pieces of marketing material that actually look good. So this is where Nano Banana really shines, right? This is where we're going into that AI Photoshop using natural language space. But if you use Nano Banana for any amount of time, you know this is more difficult than it looks. Why? Because if I add these two images, right, our mid-journey setting alongside our model, and I say, hey, have her stand in the doorway. Let's take a look at what we actually get. Here's what we get. This sucks, right? It looks like somebody just like cut her out inside of Photoshop, slapped her on here, you know, didn't do any shading or anything. Like this looks terrible, right? And this is what you're going to get when you first get started. How do we fix this? Well, there's a few different ways we can do it. When it comes to inserting people into settings, if you don't want it to do this weird cardboard cutout thing, what you want to do is you want to add some motion. You want to give them something to do, something different. So instead, we give it a prompt like this, close up of the woman standing in the doorway. She should be casually leaning against the side of the post, arms crossed, no longer holding a coffee. Camera should be eye level, maintain consistent lighting and shadows. This little bit about maintaining consistent lighting and shadows is always a good thing to add, but really we're adding changes, right? They can't just cut this out. They need to move her. She needs to do something. And by changing it in such a drastic fashion, even though this isn't that drastic, it forces the model to give us something that looks a bit better. So we're going to run it again. And this looks a lot better, right? Is this perfect? No, but the difference is stark, right? The lighting looks the same. She's actually kind of leaning up against the post. And like, 
you can work with this. This is a good place to start from, right? So just by changing the prompt and by adding some motion, some changes from the original image, that's how you're able to get around this sort of nano bananaism of it just being like a cardboard cutout slapped in front of the first image. Now that we have this image that we kind of like, now let's work on adding the branding. So what I like to do once I have an image that's been edited to something that we could work with, I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna open up a new chat. I'm gonna dump it in there. And now I'll be like, hey, here's the branding. Let's take a look at it. So I put the new image we created alongside the branding and gave it the prompt of add the CA coffee branding to the window it should be subtle and look kind of like frosted glass. What's gonna happen is it's gonna give us a busted image when it comes to aspect ratio. Now, why is that? Well, look at the first image and the second image. The aspect ratio of the last image that's given to Nano Banana will be the aspect ratio of the final output. So this output, notice how this is all messed up, not to mention this isn't exactly what we wanted. This got all screwed up. Now, if we reverse the order, right, I do the, let's bring this back in. I do the logo, logo, and then I do the image and I say, add the branding, add the branding to the windows. It will then give me a final image that's actually 16 by nine, like we want. So if you're ever having issues with aspects ratios, that's how you change it. See, notice how the image now is properly ratioed and this is an okay start with the uh, branding, but it's as simple as uh, make the branding more subtle slash see-through. We just keep iterating and iterating. So what do we do if we wanna now change the setting and see what's going on inside of this shop? Do we need to get reference images and do the whole mid-journey flow from the beginning? Not exactly. All you have to do is give it the first image that you've created and just say, hey, I want to see the interior of this exact shop. Show me the inside, chairs, tables, bars, whatever. And this is what we get, right? It even does a job. It even like reflects the branding that you see here. It's got kind of the same setup from the outside. Now the inside looks a little more cramped than it was from the front, but we actually kind of have the same barista back here and it does a really good job of character and setting consistency. Now let's continue playing with this and let's try to insert ourselves into this final image. So now we're upping the game. Now we're doing three reference images. I'm gonna show you the problems that are gonna occur with this and how we can actually fix them. So I'm gonna just gonna give it a prompt of show the man sitting in the coffee shop with that pink laptop. Now, oftentimes as you go to three, four and max five reference images, it kind of falls apart in terms of quality. But how we can address this is using collages. So here's the image it gave us, and we kind of got that like Photoshop cutout problem, right? This is the lighting doesn't look right. Like none of this looks right. This just looks like it copy pasted from these exact images and just threw it on there. So how do we solve this issue? Well, we're gonna use a collage. So I'm inside a Canva right now on a blank 16 by nine canvas. And all I've done is I've taken our three images and I've put it onto one 16 by nine page. Now you might be thinking, why does this matter? It's still three images. Well, for whatever reason, if you put more images into like one collage, you know, image, one plate, it actually handles it better. And we'll test it out using the same prompt. So we gave it the collage, gave it a little more context on the prompt, just told it we want them sitting in a chair. And look at the difference, way better. The lighting is much more consistent, although I would like it to be a little brighter, but we also have the branding on the windows, right? It's a little faded out. We still got the pink laptop. We were able to solve the problem of like multiple reference images that Nano Banana runs into. And from here, since we have a single image, we could begin slapping our branding all over the place. And now it should start clicking how we're able to create all these branded images that we can then turn into advertisements. We start with the base image. Right here we have the model and we have the coffee shop. From there we throw it into Nano Banana, we tweak the prompt until we get what we want, and then we go ahead and we throw our branding everywhere we need to. And once we have enough images like this, then we can go into the video creation piece. So like I talked about before, we have three video platforms we can use, VO3, Midjourney, and Hilu, and they should all be used for different types of videos. Now, I like Midjourney for videos like this. They're simple, low motion, and they're not very dynamic, and they're very simple to create. You're just gonna go to Create up here, and we're just going to add both a starting frame and an ending frame up top. So I have a starting frame, which is simply the woman holding the coffee cup. The ending frame, is that same woman 
And now she's just holding the coffee cup, but it has our branding on it. And remember, this was a base image we created in Midjourney, and we created this image in Nano Banana. We just took the base one, told it, hey, have the woman holding the coffee cup out in front of her, have her kind of faded in the background, and then put the branding on the coffee cup. From there, you just give it a prompt that says, slowly zoom in as the woman shows you the coffee cup, and you get stuff like this, right? Super easy. Now, this is a VO3 video, and these are great if you want some sort of audio. Come on in, let's get started. Right, the quality tends to be pretty good, but we're a little limited when it comes to VO3 because we can only use a starting frame. So if I come down here where it says frames to video, I can only do the first frame. I can't give it an ending frame like you saw in Mid Journey, which means we're kind of limited with our creative control. But if you just have a starting image and you want some voice, go with VO3. Now, last on the list is Hilu. Now, Hilu is similar to Mid Journey where we can give it a beginning and end frame, and it does a really good job if we have something that's more dynamic, right? Like, look at the amount of motion that's going on here. Is the quality perfect? No, because they're actually running uh, the free tier, so it's only like 760p or something weird. But again, very high dynamism. If I tried to do this in VO3 or if I tried to do this in Mid Journey, it wouldn't look nearly as good. And actually, right now, Hilu is running some sort of special where you get like unlimited image to video um creations as you want you can do frame to frame so the frame to frame is really easy honestly you just go image to video and you just upload some frames so if i do the start frame um like this at the beginning and i do an end frame that's totally different right it's me sitting there i just give it a prompt of how i want it to go from first frame to the last frame and you see that over here on the right obviously i use chat gpt and gemini to do that and it will create the in-between video and like you saw it's pretty good and so to summarize the video platforms real quick, if you want frame at the beginning, frame at the end, and it's very dynamic, use Hilu. If you want frame at the beginning, frame at the end, but it's kind of simple, it's not super crazy with emotion, go with Mid Journey. And if you want high quality video with audio and you're okay with just a starting frame, go with VO3. And so bringing it all back, you can kind of see now how we go from that starting foundational image to the stills and then use those stills both as a beginning frame and an ending frame to create videos, to create marketing material that you can actually use in the real world. And the best part about all this is, as you saw, is you can do this with zero assets at the beginning, right? If you have nothing, no branding, product, settings, anything that exists, you can have AI generate it for you if you can just find some inspiration out there online. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about was automation and where this plays into all this. If you've seen some of my previous videos, I'll link them above. You know that we've created an entire like ecosystem for just blasting out still ads and videos based on sort of these nano banana principles we've already talked about. Now, where can we put this in sort of this workflow we've created? Because what we've talked about so far is very, very hands-on creating all this. But I believe there is room for automation here. And that room is when we have some sort of still image like any of these, and then coming up with another 10, 20, 50, 100 variations of these images, essentially taking like a shotgun blast approach to give us some more, more material to work with. Because sometimes it is hard if it's all on us to come up with every single you know piece of marketing material, all the ideation relies on us. If you use something like this, we can instead have AI you know, do all sorts of stuff when it comes to the prompt. And with a click of a button, we can easily create 50 versions of those ads, 100 versions of those ads. And once we find those that we like, we can then go back to our hands-on workflow and start like going through the minutia, like doing the small edits by hand. So just kind of wanted to talk about that because I think it's important not to forget the automation because there is places that it can still give us a ton of value when it comes to AI content creation. So that's pretty much it, guys. I know we covered a ton of this lesson. There's a bunch of resources in my school for free, including the whole Nano Banana automation I just touched on. So make sure you check that out. And as always, I'll see you around.